Hello and welcome to High Energy Health. I'm your host, Dawson Church, and I'm smiling right now. And I'm smiling for a whole bunch of reasons. One is that I've been reflecting on the research in a really powerful new book called How Emotions Are Made by a researcher called Lisa Barrett. And in the book, she talks about how, unlike the old research, which had the idea that our emotions are largely created in response to things from outside of ourselves, she says we have a lot of power, far more power than we used to think, to actually manufacture, just decide on our own emotions. So the old model was stuff happens out here, it makes us happy, makes us sad. The model she shows based on a lot of newer research shows that things happen out here and then we decide whether we're happy and we're sad. I know uh, recently I've had some challenges I've had to deal with in my, my work, and I just basically make the choice every day to be super happy. And then I feel myself nudging up against, bumping up against my happiness set points, and I say, I'm just gonna do some releasing of those set points, and I'm gonna get even happier. And so you just get happier and happier and happier. In my <laughs> book, Bliss Brain, I ask the question, is there an end point? Is there an upper limit to this? And the research is really interesting in this respect. So what the researchers did, and this is um, this is Richard Davidson at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He looked at, he compared some a group of monks who had 40,000 lifetime hours practice in meditation and how their brains worked. And 40,000 lifetime hours is a very huge amount of med meditation practice. And then he found a group of monks, fairly rare group of monks who had over 60,000 lifetime hours of practice. And he looked at the differences in the anatomy of the brains of the two groups of monks. And he found that the group of monks that had a crazy amount of meditation practice, 60,000 hours or more, actually continue to show brain change. So we know that there's baseline, we know that there are people as they are. We know that if you meditate and if you use all the energy practices we talk about on the show, we know your brain starts to change, all kinds of interesting things happen, like the suffering part of the brain, the part of the brain that processes self-absorption, the mid prefrontal cortex, starts to really dial down. We know the insula that handles compassion and pro-social emotions dials up. And then if you meditate for a while, those changes accelerate. But in the brains of these monks who meditated for tens of thousands of hours, there are distinct anatomical changes, like the nucleus accumbens that is associated with craving. It is part of the reward system. And so, for example, the the nucleus comments in the brains of people who are addicted to various things like opioids and, and heroin and cocaine, those the, the nucleus comments is, is really active because it's triggered by those cravings. The nucleus accumbens in those monks who done 60,000 hours had actually atrophied. <laughs> they just hadn't been craving anything for a very, very long time. And so the answer from that advanced research was that there's no endpoint that all of the ways we tell ourselves that we can get happy and just this happy and no happier are actually wrong. And that neurological research shows that even in advanced stages of well-being, you just keep on getting happier and happier and happier. So I want you to, to take that to heart and practice the techniques you hear on high energy health. I just got a note from the, the wonderful team member who actually posts the show every week. And it's like our listens are the number of people listening to the show is going up by about 15% a month. More and more people are making the show part of their, their day and part of their week. So take notes, focus on these ideas, practice them in your life. And that's the promise. You get happier and happier and happier. And even in those people at the extreme end of the range who've spent that 60,000 plus hours in meditation, even then they're still getting happier. So you have a lot to be grateful for, you have a lot to be happy about. And in that book, How Emotions Are Made, the research shows we just choose. And I want you to really challenge your assumptions when you find yourself coming up with your old self-talk about how I'm limited, or I can't do this, I can't be happy because of. Know that a lot of that's a choice, and I invite you to make the choices that we offer you here on High Energy Health, all these techniques, and you can get happier and happier and happier. 
Today, I'm talking to someone who is very happy indeed, and I know this because I hung out with him recently, and we spent a lot of our time laughing. His name is Dr. Roger Yanke, J-A-H-N-K-E. He's a doctor of oriental medicine, and he has spent many, many decades in this field. He's dedicated his whole professional life to sharing the ancient, holistic, empowerment and healing traditions of China, but he distills these in a way that is understandable for people of our time. He is the author of The Healer Within and The Healing Promise of Qi, as spelled Q-I. He's trained over 3,000 Tai Chi and Qigong teachers internationally and has 35 years of experience as a physician of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. He's also made 10 research tours to China's temples and sacred mountain sites. You will get happier just by hearing me and Roger connect, share, ask the questions you'd like to ask, and laugh. Roger, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dawson. It's always such a pleasure to be with you. I'm so glad we got to connect in New Mexico recently. and. Um, reestablish our connection from over all these years. Thanks for all you do. And yeah, let's jump in. Let's jump in. And so we in the West here have been reintroduced to energy healing like in the last 40 or 50 years. I think a lot of the pivotal thing was uh, President Nixon's trip to China in 1972 when some of his aides were treated with acupuncture and suddenly acupuncture was a thing. So that led to a whole bunch of interest in energy healing, uh, the solidification of the profession of acupuncture in, in the U.S. And so now we're getting back into these energy healing modalities that's much, much more available and accessible, understandable, and better research than they ever have been before. I was re reading the other day a meta-analysis, and they found 13 thousand studies of acupuncture alone. I don't know how many Qigong studies there are, but it's certainly in the many, many hundreds, probably in the thousands. Yep. So we're now discovering these techniques of energy healing, and we they just weren't on our radar 50, 100 years ago. And so just give, give us a very broad outline to begin with what energy healing is and what it represented in these ancient oriental cultures. Thank you. So first, let's don't say um, just the Asian cultures, because it's Every indigenous culture in the world had a, shall we say, a, uh, a paradigm, a worldview that was based on uh, what we would call maybe first insights, early human insights, shall we say. And so the, the, the science that we have today was like unheard of and really didn't even happen until very recently. And these people, in every society, I, I've been to China. I spent a lot of time in Hawaii when I was studying uh, Chinese medicine. I've had uh, personal teachers who were uh, Native American shamans and have spent, uh, you know, lecture time, shall we say, with shamans from Africa and the Druids and uh, just everywhere. And and so let's start with the idea. Well, how did people, uh, shall we say, understand how the world worked? And of course, some people were much more interested in, shall we say, hunting and gathering, and some people were more watching stars and being philosophers. And, and the interface between all these people in the community began a, to develop a language. And this is all assuming, of course, that we've evolved from uh, you know, earlier uh, primates and so forth. There are many theories about how there have been many cultural waves here in, in our world. And there are many theories about how we may have been influenced in some way by visitors from far away. But the conversation that I'm holding forth right now is based on the idea that humans have evolved from um, early, uh, Neanderthals and hominids and so forth. So they're sitting around the fire, going on hunting trips. They've easily figured out language. Uh, and there's evidence of the fact that this was happening a million years ago. So a million years ago, how did we judge 
a uh, a person's uh, vitality, shall we say. And we judged a person's vitality by how they acted. So in other words, we did not uh, take dead bodies and cut them up to figure out how they, they acted. We actually observed them. The original science is observational science. And in fact, when I was a kid, and probably when you were a kid too, Dawson, when we learned about science and scientists, we learned that scientists used to be called natural philosophers, natural philosophers. So only lately did we get into the whole idea that a philosopher cannot be a scientist. Um, and, and we may or may not decide that that was the best choice to say that natural philosophers were not scientists, but we won't argue that now. Let's just go to, well, okay, so when you observe a person, what do you see? Well, you see a, uh, a, shall we say, a vital dynamic person over here, and over here you see uh, a less dynamic person, and over here you see a, a, a whole lot less dynamic person. And so let's call that vitality. And even in the uh, 18th century, uh, which is very, very recent relative to a million years, people uh, had conversations about something called vitality. And there was even a, uh, shall we say, a, uh, uh, a paradigm or, or a way of looking at the world that was called vitalism, vitalism. And vitalism is basically based on the presence of the energy of vitality in a person. So all these different cultures then took that central concept of vitalism and vitality or the lack of vitality and began to try to explain what was happening. And in India, they explained it by using the word prana, prana being the presence of vitality and how the energy, you can call it energy if you want to, uh, operates within the body and an, an entire system of Ayurvedic medicine rises out of that. In China, this whole concept of vitality is relative to a, a, a word is used to describe it called qi. And uh, when I was in Hawaii, the, the Chinese called uh, the uh, Hawaiians the kahunas and so forth from Hawaii call this manna, manna, of the presence of some kind of, uh, well, typically associated with spiritual energy because vitality, when it's depreciating in a person or when it's very present in a person, most people don't see the energy. They see the vitality of the person. They see the dynamic presence of that person. And then they call that big chi or deficient chi. And then as that whole idea of deficient chi and, and ample chi arises uh, further into the intellectual life of the uh, Chinese uh, tribes, ancient tribes, you know, 30, 40,000 years ago, they start to try to figure out how to discuss these things. And so they People fall down and break open. You know, you fall off a mountaintop and you can see the organs. And so, so they say, okay, there's some organs in here. Uh, this person is dead, so the vitality is gone, but we can see the organs. And we understand now that those organs were uh, enlivened and um, uh, supported in their functional capacity by the presence of what's now gone because this person is dead and these organs are no longer working. So then they said to themselves, and they didn't say this 30,000 years ago, they said this 500,000 years ago, if you stay active, if you rest thoroughly, if you nourish yourself with a variety of natural foods, because no, no, at that time, you know, no strip malls, no stores, no health food stores and no non-health food stores, and so the vitality that they derive from the food that they are able to, um, the food that they're able to find through their foraging, the hunting, hunting and gathering, then all translates into this is how you be vital. And of course, then you can take an average vital person and train them up 
And so the Chinese had uh, Kung Fu and they had Qigong. Tai Chi, you might say, well, why aren't you men mentioning Tai Chi? Tai Chi was not developed or uh, activities that look like Tai Chi were not named Tai Chi until the 15th and 16th century. That's like four, 500 years ago. And so originally it's Kung Fu, which is uh, training up to be strong physically and be able to do farming and hunting and, and fighting. And, uh, and then Qi Gong, which is training up to, uh, to use visualization, breath practice and so forth to be able to, uh, well, I like to say, you know, make medicine in the human system because the human system naturally from birth creates healing resources that keep us well all the days of our life until we become unwell. And then the best strategy, of course, is to become, recover your health, uh, nutrition, exercise, uh, meditation, nourishment, stress management, choosing to be happy. Wow, so you've just given us there a million years <laughs> of perspective on how not only were, was, were, did we observe that people with high levels of that life force were, were healthy, but we also could then move to the consideration of what does it take to increase that? And it's really, really powerful to, uh, to, to imagine those, those early pioneers thinking, okay, we know that there's this life force. We know there's this, this chi. How do we boost that? And it's interesting. To, I was flashing back to another um, observation in geriatrics today. So right now in geriatrics, there are all kinds of ways we can measure people's well-being as they grow older. But in geriatric medicine, there is one marker that is um, a predictor of overall general health, and that's walk speed, how fast old people walk. People who are old and walk slowly are generally sicker than those that are old and walk fast. So even nowadays in observational medicine, I, like a, I'll be at a conference, I'll be looking around and say, oh, okay, there's, there, there's you know, so-and-so's walk speed looks good, or their, um, their, their, their posture is upright, or I can see that they're moving with animation. They have a lot of range of motion. My, my favorite example of that was I watched a, a video, Roger, of a, a Tai Chi master, and he was, it was on YouTube a few years ago. He was 114 years old. 114 years old. And here he was standing on one leg. He was doing all the movements. He had full range of motion in his pectoral girdle, his pelvic girdle. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like that. Just like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, and I know so many of the people, like, you know, if you look at what the, what the complaints are, we look at those for our website. We want to know how we can address people's needs through our website. And so we look at what are, what are the what are the Google searches people are looking for? What are they worried about? What are they complaining of? What are they deficient in? What are they seeking answers to in their lives? And one of the top 10 is lack of energy. And one of the things that, that just, I'm getting chills as I say this to you right now, but um, people show up in our workshops and they're 22 years old and they're 26 and the complaining about lack of energy. And I'm thinking, okay, now if you were 86, I, I would understand, but at 22, what's, you know, what has gone wrong in your life? How can we fix it? So we'll go into this more deeply in the next segment, but um, I, I'm so struck by people who aren't old are complaining about that lack of chi in their bodies. And so the big um, next question is, how do we boost that? And we'll consider that in the next segment. Please stay tuned You're listening to High Energy Health. My name is Dawson Church. We'll be right back after a break. Dawson Church's award-winning book, Mind to Matter, has been hailed as one of the best science and health books of the decade. Over 400 studies show that your brain has the ability to turn thoughts to things, and that when you use the superpower deliberately, you can create an extraordinary life. Mind to Matter is the science and practice of how our brains create reality, and Dawson is so committed to helping people transform that he's giving copies of the book away free at mindtomatter.com. Claim your free copy at mindtomatter.com now. 
Imagine your love life, your health, your money, your career, your spiritual path. If you had the ability to turn your dreams into reality, the people who have discovered how to do this are master manifestors. Now you can learn their secrets at mastermanifestor.com. They'll give you a 21-day crash course in intuition, synchronicity, and manifestation. In just seven minutes each day, the experts at mastermanifestor.com will train your brain to be like theirs. mastermanifestor.com there's a completely natural method to help boost your immune system, maybe even up to 113% in a week. If you're interested in saving money without supplements and other expensive remedies, then explore the 7-Day Immunity Booster Program. It includes seven powerful audio programs. Two clinical trials even show that these methods can help increase your body's immunity naturally. So visit StressDump.com and find out how you can boost your immune system. That's StressDump.com. StressDump.com. Imagine having a certified wellness professional at your service 24-7. Whenever you're stressed, anxious, angry, sleepless, or depressed, you get help the moment you need it. You can talk to a compassionate practitioner anytime you want at MyStressSolution.com. In the Stress Solution app, trained experts are standing by when you need them most. Experience a free introductory session at MyStressSolution.com. You never have to face your problems alone. Get instant help at MyStressSolution.com. Helping other people heal is deeply satisfying. Watching a child's pain disappear before your eyes, a loved one calming down after a panic attack, or a veteran recovering from PTSD is a wonderful feeling. Imagine yourself with the skills and confidence to help people every single day and a rewarding career in energy healing. Taught by expert faculty, you'll become skilled in techniques validated in over 1,000 scientific studies. So get certified as an energy psychology professional today at www.newhealer.com. Your first course is free at www.newhealer.com. Hello and welcome back to High Energy Health. I'm your host, Dawson Church, and each time I do this show, which is once a week, I just feel myself bubbling with joy and enthusiasm and delight to share with you everything we have here. And I want you to be as delighted as I am to have access to this knowledge, this wisdom, and all these practical techniques we'll be sharing with you on the show. So please make it a habit to listen to High Energy Health. Join us and our rapidly expanding community of people who are making this part of their hygiene, their mental and emotional and spiritual cleansing to immerse themselves in positive messages to counteract all the other stuff that's out there. For more on Roger's work, go to his website, healthaction.net, healthaction.net, more information about his work and about his books. So Roger, that's the smart thing to do. If you're having a good experience, if you see someone doing well, somebody with a flood of chi going through their bodies and through their lives, the logical next question is, how do I get there too? How do we get more of this? And so what do those, those ancients and also the moderns start to discover? Yeah, well, uh, when we go to the origins of Qigong, meditation, yoga, Tai Chi, and any of the emerging new, uh, shall we say, contemporary versions of mind-body practice uh, and self, self-healing and self-care, there are four, what we call four dimensions. Uh, four dimensions of uh, these types of practices wherein we can, shall we say, reach to the level uh, uh, of vitality that maybe people that we witness have are <clears throat> to have a body practice. So let's lengthen our spine and sit up straight. And that can in include movement, Tai Chi, Kung Fu, Qigong yoga, a breath practice. So let's deepen and lengthen the breath right now. Just a big, long, slow, deep breath. By the way, I love the short form of long, slow, deep is LSD. So we can say, <laughs> take, a, <laughs> take a nice LSD breath. And then bring yourself into the present. And the present has no content from your past and no content from the future. It's only like what's happening now, like we're looking at a TV screen or something like a TV screen. I turn and I see 
a tree. Uh, that's happening right now. I'm taking a deep breath. That's happening right now. I'm scanning my body for attention and releasing that tension. That's happening right now. So then the whole concept of meditation is all about presencing and developing the capacity to stay present, not only while we're meditating, but between meditations. And then the fourth one is massage. So body, breath, mind, and massage. Those are the tools. Then those tools get arranged in a multitude of different ways, different yoga teachers, different Tai Chi teachers, different Qigong teachers, different Kung Fu teachers, and, and different meditation teachers all assemble those. You might say, well, my meditation teacher doesn't teach uh, massage. Okay, well, then they left that part or that dimension of self-empowerment out, and that's legal, and many people do. And some people will say, well, my teacher says I should breathe this way, but you just said I should breathe this way. And so the idea there is we like to think that one of those is wrong, but actually both of those are right. And so then the aspiring person, the person who wishes to be more well, that 22-year-old person that you said uh, was feeling low on energy, they have a pathway. The problem is, is that this is not present in our society. So like, so for instance, if you go to uh, China and the doctor says, uh, go to the park and do Tai Chi, when you get down there, there's a whole bunch of people doing Tai Chi. When, when the doctor says, when the fun, uh, integrative medicine, functional medicine doctor says, go to the park and do Tai Chi, well, there's nobody there. And so you feel weird doing it. And so you have to build a little self-esteem around the whole concept of I'm allowed to be a more uh, vital human being. I'm allowed to do what I can to heal myself without being embarrassed about these people who think I'm, you know, unusual. Who's unusual, or let's don't say usual because that's usual. Who's missing the boat, who isn't getting it, is the people who aren't doing Tai Chi. So allow me to give a quick uh, story about uh, recently I, I did an online course and it was seven weeks and one of the people in the course on the first day said, uh, I hope I can do this course because I can't see. Uh, I'm legally blind. I see some kind of shadows on my computer screen, but I have no idea what you're doing. And so I said, yeah, hang, hang in there and, and let's see what happens. And I'll, when I'm doing the practices, I'll try to be very specific. And at the seventh meeting of this uh, class, this legally blind person said, I can see you. <laughs> so back to you, Dawson. Wow. Yeah, it's just so heartwarming to witness these healings and shifts and changes in people we work with and then you realize it's possible. And Roger, so many people live in a fraction of their potential with stories about their lives, their bodies, their age, their vitality that just aren't true. And then they're stuck in those little boxes for a long time. So my in my field of psychology, we're, it, we're really focused on telling people, hey, challenge those beliefs, those restrictions just 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 aren't aren't aren't, aren't real. So um, what then is the, um, the the role you would recommend for people doing those things? So smart people are doing all of those things, but doing what the ancients do. What more can we do? And what more do you do personally by way of other things to support your health that weren't available to people a million years ago or a thousand years ago? What, what more are you doing besides that? I'm laughing right now because I kind of don't. Um, in other words, I have, I just have gotten so fascinated with these ancient people and the and the and the and the absence of all the trappings of shall we say wellness. And so I'll I'll tell you what I do. I uh, I I use I do use a juicer, and I drink celery juice or carrot juice in the morning. And then I typically do intermittent fasting, which of course is, is a paleo 
ancient thing to do. And <clears throat> then I do a lot of work in a natural environment. So right over there is a forest, uh, what we call an open space. And I tend the trails and uh, even though it's not my property, <laughs> I take my chainsaw out there and I'm kind of helping. Uh, but the point is that I do a lot of physical activity. And when you're using, let's say a chainsaw or a shovel, I do a lot of uh, getting water whenever it rarely falls here in China, uh, in uh, California, uh, into little waterways <clears throat> that take the water into the forest. Because otherwise it just rolls off into and, and just goes into the ocean. And we don't have enough water here. So I do a lot of work with, with, with water uh, using the, this pretty much a modern version of a tool. So I could say one of my modern tools is a shovel that's a little more sophisticated than the shovel from you know, 100 years ago. Um, I, I, we haven't put uh, the waste products that we have from cutting up vegetables and so forth uh, into the garbage um, ever. And so I started making compost in 1967. And comp making compost has, you know, carry it here and then you carry it there and then it's a full bucket that's quite heavy. Then I carry it up a hill and then I use the shovel there and I've got four raised beds on my garden. So I do a lot of gardening. Uh, I have fruit trees, so I'm pruning fruit trees. Uh, I don't really use the apples from the apple tree much, except for when I'm out there and there's one that's ripe and I just eat it on the spot. So having <laughs> fresh food that's right there in its own natural season is a very big part of how we do this. Of course, you don't need any accoutrements to do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're living all the time. I notice you, you you failed to mention a Peloton or a power plate or a massage chair or any of those uh, those devices that we have. We're going to go to a break right now, but please stay tuned listening to High Energy Health. My guest today is Roger Yonke, and his website is healthaction.net. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Dawson Church's award-winning book, Mind to Matter, has been hailed as one of the best science and health books of the decade. Over 400 studies show that your brain has the ability to turn thoughts to things, and that when you use the superpower deliberately, you can create an extraordinary life. Mind to Matter is the science and practice of how our brains create reality, and Dawson is so committed to helping people transform that he's giving copies of the book away free at mindtomatter.com. Claim your free copy at mindtomatter.com now. Imagine your love life, your health, your money, your career, your spiritual path. If you had the ability to turn your dreams into reality, the people who have discovered how to do this are master manifestors. Now you can learn their secrets at mastermanifestor.com. They'll give you a 21-day crash course in intuition, synchronicity, and manifestation. In just seven minutes each day, the experts at mastermanifestor.com will train your brain to be like theirs. mastermanifestor.com there's a completely natural method to help boost your immune system, maybe even up to 113% in a week. If you're interested in saving money without supplements and other expensive remedies, then explore the 7-Day Immunity Booster Program. It includes seven powerful audio programs. Two clinical trials even show that these methods can help increase your body's immunity naturally. So visit StressDump.com and find out how you can boost your immune system. That's StressDump.com. StressDump.com. Imagine having a certified wellness professional at your service 24-7. Whenever you're stressed, anxious, angry, sleepless, or depressed, you get help the moment you need it. You can talk to a compassionate practitioner anytime you want at MyStressSolution.com. In the Stress Solution app, trained experts are standing by when you need them most. Experience a free introductory session at MyStressSolution.com. You never have to face your problems alone. Get instant help at MyStressSolution.com. Helping other people heal is deeply satisfying. Watching a child's pain disappear before your eyes, a loved one calming down after a panic attack, or a veteran recovering from PTSD is a wonderful feeling. Imagine yourself with the skills and confidence to help people every single day and a rewarding career in energy healing. Taught by expert faculty, you'll become skilled in techniques validated in over 1,000 scientific studies. 
So get certified as an energy psychology professional today at www.newhealer.com. Your first course is free at www.newhealer.com. Hello and welcome back to High Energy Health. My name is Dawson Church and I hope you are inspired by what we're talking about today. And I hope you're monitoring and tuning into your own level of vitality, your own level of chi, your own level of energy and seeing what is that level of energy and then asking that second obvious question, what can I do to boost it? You'll find a lot of ideas and answers in Roger's books and also going to his website, healthaction.net. Roger, in your list of things there that you're doing, there are so many different activities. And I was just sort of picturing you mentally as you're talking about reaching up and taking some fruit and then bending down and then working on the raised beds and then carrying that compost from one place to another. And it looks like, you know, you're using pretty much all your muscle groups without the Peloton and without the power plate, without all of those, those devices. And what is, you know, what is your, how do we move in that direction as, as people and as a culture? Yeah, grow a garden. And um, if you if you don't live next to a wild place like I do, and kind of without permission, do a little tidying over there, um, there's probably not that far away that there's a, some kind of a park or, or natural place where you could uh, volunteer to be on a work team. Uh, walking is excellent. Um, I didn't mention that one thing that I do do every day is I try to, uh, I don't try to, I almost every day do, uh, some kind of a combination between yoga and calisthenics. I put a weight on my ankle, I hold eight pounds in my hands, and I do yoga postures combined with, you know, gestures of leg lifting and all that stuff to, 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 uh, so I think one of the most important things about movement is novelty. And you're an expert in brain function and brain plasticity and so forth. And so you know that what the brain really loves is new things, new and unusual things. And so one of the top recommendations is that we, um, that we, uh, you know, when people, a, a funny little story, you go to the, you go to the neurologist and say, oh, I think I might be at risk for Alzheimer's. And then the neurologist says, well, how much do you like doing new things? And, and one patient says, oh God, I hate doing new things. Neurologist writes down a little note, I'll see you soon. <laughs> the person says, I love doing new things. And then the doctor says, well, I probably won't see you for a really long time. <laughs> and so there's something about courage in doing new things. There's something about stepping out of the envelope of our natural comfort zone uh, about doing new things. And then one of the things that we absolutely want to refer to is if your life is very complex, and you just haven't found, found a way to be able to make it okay to take out times for yourself, then you will pay by having uh, less comfort and uh, a greater risk for chronic disease and earlier death and all that stuff. And so one of the, the uh, shall we say, uh, adages that I follow, uh, which goes right along with the whole idea of not having a lot of accoutrements to the type of uh, self-care practices that I do, uh, has to do with the concept of uh, convenience and complexity. We think that convenience is lowering complexity, but typically for most people, that's not true. What happens is that we become hysterical about the idea that if you don't have a highly convenient life, then you're not wealthy and you're not worthy. And uh, I, I personally just don't relate to that idea at all. I'm so sorry for those little pings. And, and, and so uh, I studied this uh, ancient philosopher 
named Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu says that average people think that they should gain something every day and accumulate over time. And this could be money, things, it could even be knowledge. And then he says, the sage understands that it's more important to reduce things, to eliminate something, to get rid of something, to uh, expel internally, we want to expel more toxicity and externally, maybe we clean closets or we uh, say, instead of trying to figure out how to get enough money to go to a rock and roll concert, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some time and go for a walk in the forest. So I'll send it back to you on that. Yeah, I know for me, those practices are so central and there's actually a, a diagnosis that's been coined in psychology over the last decade, which is nature deficit disorder. And kids, for example, have symptoms if they have nature deficit disorder. They just don't have enough contact with nature. And when you give them contact with nature, suddenly many problems that they otherwise would have are resolved. So we we can look at our lives this way. And our culture has such a automatic assumption that you will be in accumulation mode. You want more and more and more, better and better and better. And we just aren't used to that, that paradigm of simplicity. And then if people really do figure it out, and then we we kind of, we, we might idolize a Lao Tzu or a Jesus or a Buddha and think that they're special. But really, you know, we can all, all, all move to these states, have elevated states. And then when, the more and more you're meditating and the more you're in those elevated states, the less attached you are to everything going on around you, everything that you, you have. And, you know, and that makes you resilient as well. Back to your 22 year old who's exhausted. One of the things <laughs> that happens is that we've been, kids have been isolated from nature. And they see that being wealthy is the thing that you're, they're supposed to be going for. And so they become um, anxious and depressed and anxiety and depression reduce our vitality immensely. And, and so, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, the, my, the part of me that's sort of a pessimist would say, you know, this culture is collapsing. Uh, the young people uh, are all uh, feeling and they're going, they're in, they're in college or they're in high school and they're spending all this time uh, with uh, counselors and so forth and, and getting um, medications to be able to uh, modify the extent to which they're experiencing this, uh, the overwhelming stress of either being depressed or, or, or anxious or, or both. And um, the solution is pharmacological, and there are side effects to those pharmacological, uh, in, in not only in just chemistry wise, but that's also the convenience again. And so, what we know, uh, what we know from brain science, what we know from physiology, is that the body is programmed to produce internal healing resources that have no cost whatsoever, but you have to move the body. You have to believe that there's something good about the life that you're experiencing, no matter what it really is. And, and then that goes to the whole idea in the ancient cultures of having a philosophy. There's a lot of talk in the Chinese tribes, shall we say, about individuating, having a direct relationship with nature and developing a personal philosophy that frees oneself from things like guilt and regret, because guilt and regret are only going to lead to depression and anxiety. And so it's actually, people are invited to develop a personal worldview that, in, that makes them enthusiastic and turns up their vitality. Absolutely. And you can so do that. You can trigger that deliberately in so many different ways. And again, it's that um, idea that Lisa Barrett talks about in How Emotions Are Made. You can go do things that will trigger that sense of well-being. And you can just make the decision to, to um, <laughs> upregulate those positive emotions. Right. We're going to go to a break right now, but please stay tuned. You're listening to High Energy Health. And for more on Roger's work, go to his website, Health action 
www.mindtomatters.net. We'll be right back after a break. Dawson Church's award-winning book, Mind to Matter, has been hailed as one of the best science and health books of the decade. Over 400 studies show that your brain has the ability to turn thoughts to things, and that when you use this superpower deliberately, you can create an extraordinary life. Mind to Matter is the science and practice of how our brains create reality, and Dawson is so committed to helping people transform that he's giving copies of the book away free at mindtomatter.com. Claim your free copy at mindtomatter.com now. Imagine your love life, your health, your money, your career, your spiritual path. If you had the ability to turn your dreams into reality, the people who have discovered how to do this are master manifestors. Now you can learn their secrets at mastermanifestor.com. They'll give you a 21-day crash course in intuition, synchronicity, and manifestation. In just seven minutes each day, the experts at mastermanifestor.com will train your brain to be like theirs. mastermanifestor.com there's a completely natural method to help boost your immune system, maybe even up to 113% in a week. If you're interested in saving money without supplements and other expensive remedies, then explore the 7-Day Immunity Booster Program. It includes seven powerful audio programs. Two clinical trials even show that these methods can help increase your body's immunity naturally. So visit StressDump.com and find out how you can boost your immune system. That's StressDump.com. StressDump.com. Imagine having a certified wellness professional at your service 24-7. Whenever you're stressed, anxious, angry, sleepless, or depressed, you get help the moment you need it. You can talk to a compassionate practitioner anytime you want at MyStressSolution.com. In the Stress Solution app, trained experts are standing by when you need them most. Experience a free introductory session at MyStressSolution.com. You never have to face your problems alone. Get instant help at MyStressSolution.com. Helping other people heal is deeply satisfying. Watching a child's pain disappear before your eyes, a loved one calming down after a panic attack, or a veteran recovering from PTSD is a wonderful feeling. Imagine yourself with the skills and confidence to help people every single day in a rewarding career in energy healing. Taught by expert faculty, you'll become skilled in techniques validated in over 1,000 scientific studies. So get certified as an energy psychology professional today at www.newhealer.com. Your first course is free at www.newhealer.com. Hello and welcome back to High Energy Health. I'm so delighted to be part of your day. I'm glad I'm there. I'm glad that we can connect. I'm so glad that you are prioritizing your health and well-being by adding the show to the list of things you do to support and nurture yourself. Make sure you do it every week, bookmark the page, and then come with a notebook, come with a device to record what you learn and write down things that can make a difference in your life. There have been several wonderful tips we've shared already in the show that might be a turning point for you, that can be a pivot point for your well-being. So make sure you listen and listen actively and then be inspired to take action. For more on Roger's work, go to his website, healthaction.net, healthaction.net. Roger, I uh, was really intrigued by that way of seeing things. And I was thinking about that um, as I've gotten older, especially I've been taking more and more supplements. I've been doing superfoods and other kind of external things to um, really uh, just make just boost my well-being to as high degree as possible. But I was bouncing around the house this morning, and my wife, who's you know, we're 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 both around seventy years old, and uh, we're we're just like marveling how um, <laughs> it's just so wonderful to be in that that state of of feeling such well-being. And then, of course, you do workshops and meet people. Who, who aren't, and then you have the compassion for them. And we right. know that, that a, a much higher um, degree of well-being is possible. So all of these things can make a difference. And um, you were also mentioning during the break when you and I were talking about the, the external supplements that are there in Chinese medicine, they're Chinese herbs. And you were saying that there, there are teas and soups that people can use sometimes to boost their chi. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that. We'll start with the idea that the wellness program of the, the Chinese society is called Yang Sheng, Yang Sheng. 
That's Y-A-N-G. And then the second word is S-H-E-N-G. If you look that up, there's a lot on the web about it. Yang Sheng basically is the, you know, 40, 50, 70, 100,000 year old wellness program from Chinese medicine. And it's based on all the things that we know, sleep, nutrition, stress management, uh, and hydration, and, and having a positive relationship with your friends, and, and firing the people who are draining your energy, and having a direct relationship with nature, and uh, doing some kind of a meditation, or qigong, tai chi, yoga, etc. And <clears throat> so under the category of nourishment, or nutrition, is the category of uh, herbal resources. And there are different levels of herbal resources. There are, uh, what, what the Chinese, it's interesting, they called the, the herbs that we would use for medicinal purposes, they call those poisons because they are herbs that cause the body to do something that it can't do as soon as possible. So it's kind of like an emergency. And then there are herbs that are uh, for general medical uh, types of um, concerns and considerations. Uh, and they are more nutritious and less poison. And then there's another category of the, of the herbs, which are called the imperial herbs, which we, we would call the uh, adaptogenic herbs or the superfood herbs which are, they're not really targeted at any kind of health problem or disease. What they are is superfoods. And, and so uh, in ancient times, the concept of supplementation was, uh, shall we say, uh, actualized through what we would call soup. And in fact, the Chinese use the word tang. Tang means soup. So there are all these different types of herbal formulas. So there would be a soup of poisons to be able to, let's say, get uh, edema out of the body immediately or regulate a difficult heart rate very quickly, uh, but they're not nourishing. They just force the body to do something. The next level up would be you know, arthritis prevention and heart disease prevention. You know, My family has arthritis, well, I'll take these herbs. My family is predisposed to heart uh, challenges. I'll take these herbs. I don't have to wait till I get a heart attack to, to do something for my heart, which is targeted at the heart. And then the imperial ones the, the go in the soup are uh, the adaptogenic ones that don't that have nothing to do with diseases. They have everything to do with vitality maximization. And... I, I think it's just fascinating that these are all called soup. And of course, the reason was that typically they were made in the kitchen and they were typically produced by the people who were not hunting. So that would be typically the, uh, the moms and the grandmothers. And so the grandmothers were really the original doctors in China. Uh, in, in Ch well, no, not just in China, in every uh, shamanic or indigenous culture, it was the, uh, the grandmothers who were the keepers of the herbal wisdom. And so, you know, more could be said on that, but I think that's probably enough, particularly if we think, okay, well, we could make some chicken soup and we could put, you know, <laughs> carrots and kale and onions and potatoes into that soup. And that's already widely known to be a very healing kind of soup. So then if you would add some, you know, dandelion root, let's say for instance, or yellow dock root uh, or fennel or, you know, any of the other herbs that you've heard of, put those in the soup, then it becomes a little bit more of a medicine. And most of those, those herbs are nutritional herbs. They're not medicinal herbs, but they have healing qualities because they have minerals and other enzymes and cofactors in them. Yeah. Fascinating, right? 
So there are times when you will need and your body will benefit from one of those three kinds of intervention. Roger, I'm so grateful to you for sharing your wisdom. I'm so grateful for your energy as well. I, when I'm with you, when I talk to you, when I think of you and the connection, it just is so wonderful to feel that that quality of being and your radiant energy is such a joy to to touch, whether it's in your books in person or through your ideas. Thank you so much for being. Thanks for being you. Thanks for sharing and thanks for being on the show. Yeah, pleasure. What a pleasure, Dawson, to see you. Oh, what a joy. You've been listening to High Energy Health. My name is Dawson Church. Make High Energy Health part of your day, part of your week, part of your life, part of your plan for the best possible life. Thanks again. And till next time, be healthy, be happy, love yourself and bask in bliss. Thanks again.